fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This is an avocado tree I planted a couple years ago, and I actually made a video about this tree about nine months ago. And I had some shoots coming off of this that were from the rootstock that were surpassing this tree and taking over the main tree that I want to grow and produce fruit. We're in summer now here in San Diego County in zone 9B. So we're putting on a lot of growth because we had a pretty mild spring. So the tree is putting on lots of new growth. And within that new growth, I noticed we had some branches a little bit leggier than these normal branches. So I decided to come and investigate. Lo and behold, we have some more shoots coming up that are below the graft. So these are definitely from the rootstock and we need to go ahead and take care of them because you can tell this growth right here looks different than these branches that are going to go ahead and already have fruit on them. So because there is fruit, that means that these branches right here are sucking away good energy that could go to fruit production and are going to new growth instead. We need to go ahead and get rid of this growth to make sure that the tree is able to focus its energy on avocado production. Because even though this is a small avocado tree, I've already seen about 15 avocados that are just starting and probably the size of about a large bean. So we wanna make sure that over the next six to nine months, that they are able to focus all of their energy on growing avocados and not green growth that won't actually produce fruit. Luckily, I caught this early. We don't have any coming off from the very root, which is good. That means I don't have to worry about a really large thick stemmed branch or trunk coming up like I previously did. But I do still have these three fairly decent, maybe three fourths of an inch branches that are coming up that are taking up a lot of energy. There's three of them. And I think I actually have growth that's starting to pop out from the top of this tree. Now, even though this is all growth that we don't care about, we do still want to be careful when pruning because we want to make sure we don't leave the tree with an open wound that is going to not heal well and could cause an infection or something to go wrong. So be sure to cut a little bit higher. That way you can come back and clean up that cut to make it as flush and clean as you can. That way it will heal well and you don't have to worry about getting your tree sick. So look at how much growth within just about a nine month time just came onto this tree. This is a lot of growth. So there's a lot of energy that was taken away from the main tree that could have gone to either more green growth or fruit production. Luckily, it wasn't too bad like in the last video that I did about this tree where I had really large branches and I had more than I could carry up in one go. So this is a lot more manageable. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and look over the tree because I know from here up is where my graft was. So I know everything below definitely needs to be cut and has been, but anything above, I don't have to worry about. That is the main tree. So now it's really looking to see if we have any broken branches that need to be removed. So that way I don't have an open wound or if there's any other pests or issues going on that I'm not aware of. Overall, this tree looks really good and it's not showing any major issues from the prune I gave it nine months ago. So everything is looking good on this tree. The last thing I did was remove the tag. People forget that, and I almost fell victim to that as well. This tag was pretty loose when we first planted the tree, but now the trunk has really gotten thick and it was starting to get pretty tight on it, and I didn't want it to girdle the tree, so it was time to remove it. If you'd forget it, it can cause your tree to girdle, and then it will cause it to eventually die off or kill that part of the trunk, and then you're left with a tree that's not going to be as productive or healthy because of that die off. Now, just to show you the differences in avocado trees and how the variety of the tree you're growing will dictate the size and shape of it. This right here 
is a bacon avocado tree. The one I was showing you is my lamb Haas avocado. Now, this one was planted at the same time and it has much larger fruit on it. They're soft skinned or smooth skinned. And this tree has grown massively where I think it's over 10 feet tall now. Now, maybe my lamb Haas would be bigger if I would have caught those water shoots or the suckers coming up and pulling nutrients, it might have grown bigger than what it is right now. But I hadn't, and unfortunately the tree was a little stunted last year. But this tree right here doesn't have that issue. I've checked it, and there are no uh, rootstock growth coming off of this tree. So this is just showing that the variety matters. Now there are other varieties like the gem avocado where they grow almost Christmas tree-like and they don't grow very wide. And some of these bigger production farms are now starting to plant them and they're planting them in as close as eight feet apart from each other. Now my older Haas trees that are very large, they're planted 20 by 20. So 20 foot rows by 20 foot spacings. Those gem avocados, they're growing in eight feet by 12 feet spacings. So avocado varieties matter. This tree is doing really good and I'm looking forward to when these avocados are ready because the bacons have a really different flavor than the Haas that I typically grow. So be sure if you're buying an avocado tree and you're getting it from a good nursery, they'll know everything about that variety. So they should be able to tell you how big it's gonna get, how fast it's gonna grow, how wide it's gonna get, and what the avocados taste like. So that's why it's really good to talk to your nurseries because they'll tell you what is gonna be best for your taste. So it really depends on what you want. So be sure to talk to your nurseries, that way they can help you out and figure out what's gonna be best. So I was really worried about the prune I had done nine months ago, but seeing that the tree went from being almost six feet tall to now above my reach, which is about eight feet. And I am standing on a hillside, but I know this tree is growing and putting on nice size. Plus it's giving me avocados. I'm happy with how this tree's coming out. Avocado trees really don't need heavy pruning. They will kind of just grow however they want to and into the shapes that they want, depending on the variety. Now this tree is still fairly small, so it really doesn't need to be pruned for a few more years to help start shaping it and getting those branches growing in the best directions and getting nice strong branches to grow. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this tree. It's as simple as that, just three little cuts this time. And I was able to get rid of this excess growth. I'm gonna go ahead, shred this up, put it in the compost pile. So that way in a few months, I can go ahead and add it back to this tree and it will feed itself. If you wanna learn more about composting, subscribe because I have quite a few videos on it. All right, go out in the garden, go get dirty, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.